tonight on CTV. Drivers will be seeing a lot more troopers out this weekend. We'll tell you why. Also in live streaming demonstrations for the latest on the LSU class today. Dance around the oval is in full swing, plus more construction on the campus will bring some very needed educational buildings to CSU. All this plus weather, sports, and entertainment. CTV starts now. Good evening, Rams. I'm Carson Bush Jost. And I'm Nicole Hines, filling in for Grace Reader tonight. Well, the Colorado State Patrol will be in full force this weekend as part of their Zero Fatalities, Zero Tolerance campaign. The extra troopers will be out Friday at 6 p.m. through Monday at midnight. Troopers will be educating drivers who pose a threat to themselves or others on the road through warnings, citations, possibly jail time. In an interview with the Greeley Tribune, Colonel Scott Hernandez, chief of the State Patrol traffic crashes, said, quote, traffic crashes are still one of the leading causes of death in Colorado and across the country, end quote. Traffic-related deaths are on the rise in Larimer County. So far, there have been 32 traffic-related deaths in Larimer County since January 1, 2015. There were 24 car-related deaths in 2014 and 2013. The latest death occurred this past Sunday. Josine Walters, a recent graduate of CSU, was killed in a car accident on US-287. According to Colorado State Patrol spokesman Nate Reed, Charges against the driver, Amy Clark, a CSU graduate student, are pending. The month of October is Sudden Cardiac Arrest Awareness Month. Today, CSU staff was out on the plaza spreading awareness. Call for help now. Over a quarter of a million sudden cardiac arrests occur every year, and 95% of those cases result in death. Today on the plaza, risk management was raising awareness for Sudden Cardiac Arrest Awareness Month. Sudden cardiac arrest is not age discriminate, so even though um, age and race can be factors in sudden cardiac arrest, uh, there have been plenty of cases of elite athletes or young athletes uh, falling victim to sudden cardiac arrest. Many students don't know there are over 140 automated external defibrillators, also known as AEDs, on campus, a device that gives victims of cardiac arrest the best chance to survive. AED helps to restore um, a fibrillation or um, an uncoordinated rhythm in the heart. Students learned how to use an AED, an easy task with a few steps that could save someone's life. Apply pad to bare skin, exactly as shown in the picture. CPR and AEDs are the best ways to save someone from a cardiac arrest. If you see someone who may be suffering from an attack, dial 911 immediately. There is also a new app promoted and utilized by the Pooter Fire Authority called Pulse Point that helps those suffering from cardiac arrest get assistance quicker. We'll have the force, full story on it next week. On Wednesday, Cans Around the Oval kicked off with its annual can construction event. Groups fundraised for cans and then made designs out of the cans they gathered. Some of the groups that participated included middle schools, fraternity and sorority groups, and also teams of CSU students. Anyone that was walking by was able to vote for the group they thought did the best. The Cans Around the Oval event will be on Wednesday of next week from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. All cans will be donated to the Food Bank of Larimer County. Can Instruction is a uh, event that we have out in the plaza every year. And uh, the plaza um, focuses like in all of these great structures. Um, that these groups, they've collected all these donations, so they're building up these structures um, that they've come up with. And uh, basically it's just there to raise awareness about hunger in our community and to kind of kick off cans around the Oval. If you are interested in donating cans or money, you can head to the Oval on Wednesday, October 21st. This is the largest food drive in Larimer County. The official groundbreaking ceremony for CSU's new biology and chemistry building took place on Thursday afternoon. Speakers at the event included Tony Frank and the Dean of Natural Sciences. The new 61,000 square foot chemistry building will be built east of the anatomy and zoology building. More than 1,400 students in the program, biology is the school's largest major. Its new building will take up to 152,000 square feet of space. Part of construction costs will be covered by state funds, but CSU will be actively fundraising its own money to cover costs. CSU hopes to have both buildings completed by fall 2017. Well, it's a wonderful day for CSU. These two departments are so central to what the university's history has been to, and to what students take today. And to have both of these buildings coming up at the same time is really a remarkable opportunity for the university. 
If you're planning on celebrating CSU's homecoming this weekend, there are plenty of events to partake in. Tomorrow, Friday the 16th, we'll have Running of the Rams for at 315 on Newton Plaza and the homecoming parade taking place at 4.30 p.m. at the Oval. Saturday, the tailgate for the homecoming game begins at 10.30 a.m. and kickoff is at 1.30 p.m. If you'd like to watch the parade from the comfort of your home, the parade will be live streamed online for the first time ever. And for more events about homecoming and information about the live stream, visit homecoming.colostate.edu. Coming up after the break, weather anchor Sierra Symes with the latest Fort Collins forecast. Stay tuned, Rams. We'll be right back. Don't worry, the 74 people were picked before me in the NFL draft. To fight childhood obesity, United Way and the NFL are helping kids play at least 60 minutes a day. Okay, time for the team obstacle course. Yay! What this place needs is more healthy kids. To get involved or donate, go to unitedway.org slash play60. Now I get it. Welcome back from the break with your CTV weather. I'm Sierra Symes. It's currently 54 outside with some partly cloudy skies. The sun did set about half an hour before our show started tonight. It has been fun to track the sunsets as they get earlier and earlier as we're moving into fall. Let's take a look at that progression. On the first of the month, the sun set just after 640. Here tonight in the middle of our October, that time has fallen to 620. We're actually losing about two and a half minutes of daylight each day, and by the time the month ends, the sun will dip below the mountains just before 6. It's a little sad, but these fall sunsets can be stunning. If you're feeling under the weather or feeling stressed out over midterms, I recommend watching one of these sunsets. They have just spectacular colors this time of year. With the loss of those rays, the leaves are also putting on a beautiful show as they lose their chlorophyll pigments. This viewer photo of those vibrant colors was sent in by Oliver Homan. Thank you for submitting the photo. For tonight, we are seeing 30s along the western slope with 40s in Telluride and Grand Junction. Up the I-25 corridor, we are also seeing 30s and 40s with 40 in De 42 in Denver, 41 in Pueblo, and 37 in Fort Collins. A little cool, but over on the Eastern Plains, we are actually having our first frost advisory of the season, and that's going to affect Sterling, Lyman, and Burlington. It's going to be 36 in Lamar. Starting off tomorrow, chilly. Your ADM is going to be at 39 degrees, which is going to move into a cool 58 by noon, and we will almost reach our high of 67 by the late afternoon. It's taking longer for the air to warm up because of that lack of daylight hours. But we will be rounding out to have some pretty pleasant conditions across the state tomorrow. We're seeing 60s and 70s through western Colorado with a 59 in Telluride. Up the I-25 corridor, same case with 70 in Denver and 67 in Pueblo, 67 as well in Fort Collins. Over on the Eastern Plains, that overnight frost is going to keep this side of the state pretty cool, but we're seeing 60s, 61 in Burlington, 64 in Lamar. For your seven day weather forecast, the clouds are going to part away into some sunshine for the end of your week, and those high 60s are going to warm up into low 70s for the weekend. Take advantage of this. These temperatures are warmer than the averages right now. So maybe take a de stressor from your midterms and hike up to Horsetooth Rock or go out to Old Town. If you are going out for the night, though, beware of those lows in the 40s and dress accordingly. The clouds are moving back in on Sunday, bringing a chance of evening showers on Monday, and the temperatures are going to drop to 6035 for Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. Let's look at your sporting calendar. For tomorrow evening, the women's swimming team is swimming against Denver in a meet at 5 p.m. That will be located at the pool in Moby. And yes, it's finally here. Homecoming is happening on Saturday. Um, we are going to be playing Air Force at 1.30 at Hughes Stadium. This could be one of the last homecomings we have at Hughes, so be sure to come cheer on your Rams as they play Air Force Academy.
For your Saturday 1.30 kickoff, it is going to be in the 70s, but mostly cloudy. And by the fourth quarter, those overcast skies will drop us to 69 degrees. So be sure to bring a jacket to this one. And that's all the weather forecasting I have for you this evening. Up next, anchor Olivia Landis will give you her different kind of forecast for Ram Sports right after the break. Me and my boy Matt had it good. He had catnip that was off the hook. But one day, he brings a girl home, and she's allergic to cats. Every sneeze was a nail in my coffin. Now I'm in a shelter. It's decent, but they don't even have Wi-Fi. Sure, I look cute now, but when my owner lost his job, it was rough. I was living on the street, and one night, me and this Cocker Spaniel got into it so bad, I wound up looking like an ice cream cone. I cried a little bit, but thankfully I got rescued, so I'm running, I'm jumping, all back to my old self, and I'm ready to give unconditional love, even if you put a lampshade on my head. Hello and welcome back from the break, Rams. I'm sports anchor Olivia Landis here with the latest Ram sports news. As the Colorado State men's football team kicks off homecoming this Saturday at Hughes Stadium against Air Force, Ram fans are hoping to see better play than the Boise State game last week. The Rams look to take on the in-state rival in the 101st annual CSU homecoming and family weekend. On the line is the Ram Falcon, tr Falcon Trophy, which has been the award for winning the game since 1980. Coach Mike Bogle and his team are coming off of the recent 41 to 10 loss against Boise State, ready to go. The more we work it, the better we'll be. You know, on a short week, it's tough. When I say a short week, on one week, it is tough uh, to get ready for an option team. But, uh, you know, we've got some seniors on that team that need to take responsibility and be disciplined this week. The 21st ranked Colorado State Rams volleyball team defeated the Wyoming Cowgirls Tuesday night for the annual border war match. CSU not only ranks number one in the conference, but remains undefeated in the Mountain West as well. Since the Rams have been on a roll, I decided to choose senior Adriana Colbert, who recorded her fifth triple-double of the season Tuesday night, as player of the week. And team leaders that really stuck out this game, Dree Colbert had her fifth triple-double of the season, yes. with Crystal Young giving 20 assists. and. In the press conference, Dre Colbert did mention how Crystal Young was setting her up all night. So Dre Colbert really gives all of, her, all of her success to her teammates. Up next for the Rams, they hit the road this Saturday to take on San Jose, San Jose State to continue conference play. Another sport to look forward to this weekend at home is the women's swimming and diving team. The Rams will host Denver in their second home meet of the season tomorrow at 5 p.m. The Rams will be the meet will be streamed live at www.csurams.com slash videos. Some of you may be wondering if I ever get a little competitive myself since I'm around sports so much. Well, the answer is yes, and I recently challenged sports reporter Brett Kennedy to a sporting competition. What's up Rams? I'm Olivia Landis. And I'm Brett Kennedy. And in light of homecoming weekend, Brett and I decided to have a little bit of a challenge amongst each other. We're going to do some sports challenges to see who's better at what sport. We've got soccer. We've got basketball. We've got football. And we've got volleyball. You guys decide who's the better athlete. Let's do this. Catch! Ah. Made it. First up is soccer. And the challenge is to shoot on a lacrosse goal because we're going to measure our accuracy. As you can see, these goals are pretty small, so it's harder to make it. Woo, baby! And that's how it's done. <laughs> Second challenge is football. We're going to be passing it to one another. We're going to be running fade routes right down the middle. But we're going to be throwing it kind of high, so it's going to be difficult to catch. Let's do this. challenge is basketball. Time to hit the hoops. We're going to see who can have the best layups, three-pointers, 
and free throws. Let's do it. For our final challenge, we take to the courts with the volleyball. We're going to have two challenges, a serving challenge and a spiking challenge. Beware folks, my serve is pretty ugly. We'll see about that. <laughs> yeah. Well, sadly, that concludes our sports challenge. And it looks like Olivia won. Sorry, Brett. Until next time. By the looks of it, I think it was my soccer goal that put me on top. But that's all I have for sports tonight. But stay tuned because Neil Denman is up next with entertainment. Test scores, GPAs, credits complete. They say what you've done, but they're only part of who you will become. With each new experience, discovery, and triumph, you become who you were always meant to be. And what you'll remember most is your state of curiosity state of unity, state of awe. Morning, Gary. We are GetSchooled.com. You want a college education, don't you? You know you do. That's why we're here. We're free and here to guide you through every step of the way, starting with attendance. <laughs> Gary, financial aid forms. Picking a college, man. You and us we go together like tacos and Tuesday. And I love tacos. Go to GetSchool.com. Oh, hey there, Rams. I'm Neil Demon, and I'm filling in for Gabe Pokrest tonight as your entertainment host. I'll be giving you the news on everything in the entertainment world, so let's get going. This Sunday, Old Town Square will finally be open for business again. As most of you know, last spring construction began in order to renovate Old Town Square. The renovations include a water jet feature, new pavings, a children's play area, new seating areas during concerts and social events, and an outdoor fireplace. Originally, the project was supposed to be much earlier. However, due to all the rain we had this summer, construction was delayed. But nonetheless, Old Fort Collins will finally have Old Town Square just in time for the weekend. Rumors are running wild. Multiple news outlets are reporting that a new Star Wars The Force Awakens trailer is being released on Monday, along with access to pre-sale tickets. The highly anticipated Star Wars film is hitting a little more than two months away, so it makes sense to see a new trailer at this point. Fans will have just have to wait a few more days to see if these rumors ring true. Star Wars Battlefront recently released a playable beta for the upcoming game set to release on November 17th. Star Wars Battlefront was created by Electronic Arts and Swedish studio DICE, and the beta was downloaded by 9 million people. Just the beta. This marks the largest beta release in EA history, and the game is only going to get even crazier. With the announcement of the game coming back in April, the Star Wars fans have been eagerly awaiting for this game, and according to those numbers, they are not playing around. Or are they? They're both not playing around and they're playing around? That's confusing. Okay, moving on. Yesterday, Warner Brothers announced that in 2020, they were going to release a King Kong vs. Godzilla movie. That is going to be epic. And based on the fact that Godzilla was just rebooted in 2014, the, for the King Kong reboot, look for the King Kong reboot in 2017, also the Godzilla 2 premiere in 2018. I'm glad the entertainment world is bringing back these classic characters because, quite frankly, it's awesome to see two monsters fight each other while simultaneously destroying everything in their path. And since we're on the subject of movies, as we said last week, the new Goosebumps movie is coming out tomorrow. And this is just going to be pretty nostalgic, as I'm sure most of you fans, uh, including my favorite Goosebumps book from when I was a kid. Well, thanks to Gabe for still leaving a mark on the show. Oh, wait. Oh, all right. Gabe is pretty silly. <laughs> uh, uh, it's the abominable snowman of Pasadena. Gabe, your face is quite silly. I wish I could own my, read my own book. Oh, I hope you can read, Gabe. <laughs> uh, calling all creeps. Well, Gabe's not really a creep, but I guess he could be. <laughs> Depends on whether you think he is. I don't think he is, just for that, Gabe. Well, thanks, Gabe, for still leaving your unique mark on the show. After those pictures of belittlement, we're going to end the show there. And I bet Gabe will love that. Make sure to tune in to CTV next week 
on Monday at 7 p.m. for your CTV Sports and Tuesday through Thursday for CTV News as well. Have a great homecoming weekend, Rams. Stay safe, stay warm, and we'll see you next time.